Hello, and welcome to video three for those students with the, doing the IQA qualification. We've looked so far at how we will sample using our sampling policy and linking that to the requirements of camera, but I'm gonna work you through an example now by giving you a scenario. So let's look at this. For our scenario, our course has 100 learners. Of those 100 learners, 14 have a special educational need and 10 are English as an additional language. The course we're going to deliver has eight units that we'll be delivering over 12 months. And we have two assessors delivering the qualification. Assessor number one is an experienced assessor, but they work away from the main campus. And assessor two is a newly qualified assessor. If we look at camera again, candidates. Remember, our policy says that all candidates will be sampled. So therefore, we'll choose all candidates. If your centre doesn't, then you'll need to make sure that an even range is sampled. So you'll need to be thinking about gender, age, ethnicity, and all the other factors which make up a cohort. But for, for ourselves, we can sample all candidates, so we don't need to think about these extra uh, sampling uh, strategies we'll need to put into place. Assessors. We're sampling two units from Assessor 1 because they're an experienced assessor, and our policy says 25%, so that'll be the two units. But for our newly qualified assessor, where our policy says 50%, we'll need to sample four units. Methods of assessment. Because we're assessing all our candidates, we will sample all eight units throughout the year. This will ensure that all assessment methods will be sampled. If you only sample some candidates or some of the units, again, you'll have to put extra strategies in place to ensure that all assessment methods are sampled. But because we sample all units and all candidates, we know we will hit all assessment methods. The same applies for assessment evidence. Because we're sampling all eight units throughout the year, we know that we will ensure that all assessment evidence is sampled. If your, your policy doesn't say that, again, additional arrangements will need to be made. For the point of view of the records, we're going to be looking at the assessment plans. So they will be sampled and scrutinised prior to delivery, as well as records of assessment, including learner feedback is checked to make sure it's fit for purpose. And finally, IQA documentation to check to make sure that any previous actions have been done. Finally, the A for assessment sites. Both assessors are in different locations. We will need to think about this, not in our planning stage, but actually how we're going to do it. Different sampling collection techniques may be used for the assessors out of campus. For example, we will often be using a lot of technology. So maybe we can collect that, maybe we can arrange for documents to be scanned in and emailed over to us rather than actually going out to the site. Some site visits will be necessary, but maybe we can do some desktop sampling as well uh, to reduce the burden on ourselves as the assessor. Okay, so we know what we're doing. We know our course. So let's have a look at what I've produced. Okay, so here is my sampling grid. But I'll start with the first one, which is for the experienced assessor. Remember, the experienced assessor will be sampling two units. Something I quickly need to mention to you is the difference between interim and summative sampling. The interim is something we do whilst a unit or piece of work is being delivered. So the unit or piece of work is not complete, but we're looking to see how well progress is being made within the unit. The summative sample is for units or pieces of work which are totally complete, have been marked as uh, successful by the assessor. So we just need to bear in mind that we need to get a mix of both interim and summative sampling during our year and, during, and, and into our sampling plan. We have down the side here all 50 learners taking into account our SEN and our EAL and the 12 months of the year. What we've decided to do for this qualification is deliver three units in the first three months, a further three units in the second three months and two units in the third three months. That leaves us three months at the end for any mopping up to ensure that we're getting timely completions for our learners. So learners one to six. 
straight away within the first quarter, which could be the first term, I will be doing an interim sample of their unit one, just to check that everything is going as it should be. You'll notice for those learners, right at the end I'll be doing a summative sample of unit eight, so all the work will be completed then. I've planned this, so as you can see, as I go through my learners, units one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, we'll all have an in from sample, and working back, units one, two, three, all the way through to eight, we'll have a summative sample. So all units uh, will be sampled twice, an interim and a summative, but each learner will also uh, be sampled twice. That will be our 25%. If we now look at our newly qualified assessor, we're sampling 50%. Now I think the highest risk here will become when our newly qualified centre, our newly qualified assessor first starts delivering. So what I've decided to do is I've done an interim sample of unit one and an interim sample of unit two for all learners within that first three months. If the assessor is having any difficulties, that should allow me to find out what they are very, very early and to take remedial action and do some extra work maybe some extra CPD with that new assessor. But again, we are looking at our 50% sample, so it's all learners and four units. It's split down again so that during the course of the 12 month period, there is an interim and a summative sample for every single unit. So every single unit is actually sampled twice, once during its delivery and at the end when it's been completed. Using exactly the same methods, I would expect these last few months just to be mopping up so I can ensure that all my learners are working towards a timely completion. Okay, so that's how I've decided to set up my sampling plan. Your sampling plan could be slightly different uh, for the same scenario, but hopefully you'll understand the rationale of why I've decided to do more front sampling with a new assessor than I do with an experienced assessor. Okay, thank you very much, and that's the end of this third tutorial video.